Okay, good day. We are now on the corona classification, which it is the classification of Philippine climate. So first, we need to define what is the difference between the weather and the climate. So weather is the condition of the atmosphere in a place for a short period of time. While the climate, it is the average weather condition of a place for a longer period of time. This climate is considered as our type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4, in which you need to, to know um, the dry and the wet season. While the weather, it is everyday forecast. Okay, you need to, it is everyday forecast. Just stated on the news, that's weather conditions every day. So that's the difference. Climate is seasonal and weather is every day. Every day atmosphere condition or the condition if they will rain or not. So as you can see, we have the map of the Philippines and colored with red, green, blue, and yellow. These colors represent the four types of climates in the Philippines. For the type 1, uh, places are pronounced wet and dry seasons. So that's their climate. And dry from November to May and wet from June to October. So the places are Ilocos, Occidental Mindoro, Antique, and the Negros Occidental. And for the type 2, they have no dry season with pronounced maximum rain period. With maximum rain period is from November to January. So that's 3 months. And in Bicol, the summer, Leyte, Surigao, Agusan, and Davao region. For the type 3, they have no very pronounced maximum rain period with short dry season, which lasts from 1 to 3 months, of course. A dry from February to April. The Cagayan, the Nueva Vizcaya, the Capiz, the Cebu, the Negros, Occidental, the Masbate, and the Mountain Province. And the fourth one have no pronounced maximum rain period and no dry season. So rainfall is distributed throughout the year. So Isabela, Bohol, Cotabato, Lanao, Zamboanga, Bukidnon. So most fruits are best grown in these type 4 places, type 4 climates in the Philippines where rainfall is distributed throughout the year. So they are the places that good for production of different crops because of its uh, climate. So for the different climate, we have the three zones. Of course, it is already discussed from the previous uh, topics. We have the torrid zone the temperate zone, and the frigid zone. First, we have tropical climate in the torrid zone. We have wet and dry season. And for the temperate climate, we have winter, spring, summer, and fall, which is not in the Philippines. And for the frigid zone, it is the cold climate or the very cold or snow all year. It is from the Antarctic region or the North Pole. For the factors affecting climate, first we have altitude, the latitude, the rays of the sun, the bodies of water, the amount of rainfall, and the wind system. So we have six, okay? First we have altitude. So it is on the elevation. From the example below, we have Baguio and Tagaytay in which uh, fogging is always 
cold conditions, cold temperature is is normal to their places. So the height of the place above sea level. The climate in higher places is cooler than in lowlands. As height increases, air becomes thinner or less dense, which can hold much heat. Therefore, it is almost cold. For every 1,000 feet increase in height, the temperature drops by 3.5 degrees Celsius. So 1,000 kilometer decreases of 7 degrees Celsius. So that's the higher the cold uh, temperature. So for the latitude, the distance of a place north or the south of the equator. So we have the North Pole and the South Pole. The near the place is uh, the equator, which is on the, uh, the middle of the globe. So the hotter it is. So as in Asia, Philippines is on the equator equatorial line, near the equatorial line. So the cooler it, uh, the farther the place is, the cooler it gets when it is outer um, farthest from the equatorial line. So the equator receives direct sunlight. Thus, the temperature in places near it is high. So you know already the places on the globe in which the globe have equatorial line. And you can see the places on it. Okay, we have the third is the rays of the sun. Is the amount of sunlight a place receives. So first the equator temperate zone and the north or the south pole. So in the equator as discussed in the latitude that near the latitude is uh, the hotter one because of the direct rays of the sunlight to it. So more heat and more radiation. So for the, for the temperate zone, the rays of the suns are slanting. So less heat. And very little heat from the suns are on the south pole in the north pole, receiving lower temperature of the rays of the sun in which lower radiation for the bodies of water for the bodies of water we have uh, oceans lakes so land absorbs and loses heat quickly while water absorbs and loses heat slowly so land breeze which is in night time and cold air comes from the land. With sea breeze or daytime, cold air comes from the water. This is the uh, illustration. It's sending cool air to the land, which is the land breeze is uh, also the water is rising. Uh, rising warm air the ocean and it is a cycle from the daytime in the nighttime you can see as the sea breeze the warm land during the day and the cooler water the color land co cooler than land As you can see in the bodies of water, sea breeze in the daytime, cold air comes from the water. And for the amount of rainfall, we have tropical areas are hot with monthly temperature above 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius. And they receive a large amount of rainfall. Second, for the temperate zone, there are differences in temperature and precipitation patterns, 
which is winters can be quite cold because of heavy snowfall with all at least one month averaging below freezing point just negative degree 30 degrees celsius or 26.6 degree fahrenheit so the warmest month has an average temperature of 50 degrees celsius at 50 degree fahrenheit or the 10 degree celsius which is very cold and polar areas are extremely cold and they are qui quite dry although water is abundant in the form of the solid ice for the wind system wind is moving air and is formed by the unequal heating of the earth's surface so the philippines geographical location contributes to its prevailing wind system we have the northeast monsoon the southwest monsoon and the trade winds what is the northeast monsoon it is the hanging amigen and the southwest monsoon is the hanging habagat which is uh, familiar in the philippines and from november to march and blows from Siberia towards the Philippines. So brings the cold temperature from the northern hemisphere or the winter, which is the cold um, wind blows from Siberia to towards the Philippines. For the southwest monsoon, it is known as Hanging Habagat, which is from June to October. So it develops because of the cold air mass coming from the south australia where it is winter this cold front meets the warm front in the philippines and causes the rainy season in the western part of the country for the letter c the trade winds so from march to early may which blows from the north pacific ocean and reach the philippines from the east and it brings rain only to the eastern part of the country. Just remember that. And that's all. Uh, thank you.